Yeah. All right, we are live. This is a year of firsts all together. <laughs> First, we move everybody okay, onto yeah. Zoom for all the classes. Then we do our events, mostly virtual. And now we're in the kitchen of the GAI with the weather that couldn't be better for you guys to join us in the kitchen. So thanks for being here. Erin, how are you today? I'm good. So happy to be here. Welcome, everyone. And the star of the show today is, of course, Helga. Helga, thank you for being in our kitchen. Well, thank you for having me to let me do this, to pass on a full tradition of cooking. And we are years. making Spätzle today. Spätzle, yes. So first things first, uh, I am really just good at eating. I'm not good <laughs> at cooking. So the million dollar question is, how difficult is it on a scale from one to 10? And what actually is in Spätzle? It's very, it's really not a big deal. It's very easy to do. Anybody can do it, really. It's, uh, it only has uh, basically three ingredients, flour, egg, and water, and maybe a little salt to your taste and a little nutmeg to your taste. So it's um, right there, it's very easy to handle three ingredients. And from scratch, starting from making it from take? Making it from scratch. And I will demonstrate this to you in a moment. And um, we have the water, everything ready to go. And um, yeah, and we are, there is, um, we have, I will show you four different ways of using the Spätzle dough. So one is the traditional way, the, um, the very old fashioned way, where you cut it off the board. You put a little dough on here and you shave it into the hot boiling water. And then there is um, just with two teaspoons, you drop little little um, nokis in Italy. They would call them noki, and here we call them spätzle okay. and in Germany. And um, then the other way we have here the spätzle press. You put your dough in here and then Pull that over the hot water, which I will demonstrate to you in a moment. And here's another way of doing it. That's the Spätzle Hobel. You set it on top, put the dough in here, and you you kind of cut them. The dough falls into the hot water, and you cut it off. And these are the, in Switzerland, they call them Knöpfli. Now, they come out like little buttons. Outside of the spoons, all this looks like reasonably specialized equipment for making spätzle. Can you just roll them by hand as well? Would that be no, good? because that dough, as I will show to you, is really very sticky. Wait, you see, so it's really, well. and this is how it has to be. Okay. And you see the bubbles it, it throws, that's how that dough has to be. Okay. That it blows bubbles. So before we jump headfirst into the kitchen, into the cooking process, a word of thanks to a couple of people who actually make all this possible. For one of course, for Erin to organize everything and to be our sidekick today. Linda DeRoli, now Linda Schenk. Uh, for those who don't know, congratulations once again to Linda for getting married. Uh, for organizing once again, this festival. Of course, Helga. And behind the scenes, the one person you can't see at all is Erin, our Zoom Erin. It's the person that essentially switches the camera angles, make sure that you actually hear us, that we can hear you. You can ask questions along the way today, and we will try to type them in. So, Erin, I don't have ears. I mean, I do have ears, but I don't have the ability to listen to you. And Erin will basically bring your questions to Helga. So with that being said, Helga, I'm in your hands. Well, Tell me what we would need to do here. Well, should we start with demonstrating how to make the Absolutely. dough? Absolutely. Yes. Let's okay. The then I have here two eggs and this is the recipe I guess what that was passed on to the viewers and a teaspoon of salt and I'm very careful with nutmeg because it's a very strong tasting uh, spice. So right now we have two full eggs, two one full teaspoon eggs, of salt and a and pinch a, of nutmeg. A pinch of nutmeg. Okay. And you see this very well. Add a half a cup of water. We have one question. We already have the first question. 
and that is from Gretchen. She says, can you make, oh, excuse me, can you use a potato grater? A potato it? grater? No, that would be too fine. No, that would not work. So That would make angel hair pasta. Never mind. <laughs> that would she be all mush. It would turn out to mush. More specifically, a kartoffelreiber? Kartoffelreiber? No. I don't know how you would use a kartoffelreiber with that. I, okay. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. It's just, um, yeah. I'll be showing you some of the equipments that we can use. And uh, I'm just going, uh, here we are with the dough. Now I beat the egg and the water and the salt. And now we add the flour. How much flour was this that? This is uh, one and three quarter cup. Okay, one and three quarter cups, two, two eggs, um, half cup of water. A half a cup of water. A tablespoon of salt and mm -hmm. uh, a pinch of nutmeg. Yeah. We're getting there. So, I think we have to add another little bit of water. So water basically is um, based on need. So there's no an exact no exact quantity of water. You just look no, at the dough and you know what you need to add. Yeah, because sometimes flour maybe needs a little more. That's that's how cooking is at times. You cannot always go so exactly by by the measurement that's given. Okay. Yeah, we need a little more water. Also, we could add an extra egg if you like it. Would that okay. make it more smooth or would that change the consistency altogether? Yeah, it would be, wouldn't taste so flowery right then, okay. you know. Okay. Yeah, the eggs are a very important component in this dough. Now we have it about right. Okay. And you have to beat it until it's smooth. As you can see, it's not very smooth right now. It's kind of regularly. But we don't have to do this right now because I have... Can I borrow your bowl for a second and mm -hmm. uh, show this to everyone in attendance? Yeah. Thank you. And I have the dough ready and you see... Now, this is what it looks like right now. It's just this tiny little bowl, not yet quite spatzle, but we're halfway there. And it has to be like this, as you can see, these bubbles. Should we show it? Yes, exactly? absolutely. It's a little heavy. You want me to oh, hold no, it? Oh, no, you got it. So, there are some bubbles. I'm trying not to lose half our mix right now, but perhaps on mm -hmm. camera you can tell that there are a few bubbles in there, and the bubbling is the idea that you mm -hmm. folded it over. That it is perfect to go on with the cooking part. Okay. So, when it's like this falling real heavy off the, I like a spatula to beat it up. You get a lot more mm -hmm. air into it rather than that little wooden spoon. Um, Helga, can I ask a, a quick question from Steven about what kind of flour is best? It's an all-purpose flour. A semolina flour? No, or? you can use semolina. If you have semolina, you may use that, yeah. But otherwise, all-purpose flour is just fine. Yeah. Would you ever add spices to the mix? <laughs> well, I think a creative cook maybe would do that, you know, so... So the, the purist would not? But in the, yeah, okay. Exactly. This is because you add, you eat it with gravy that has a lot of flavor. Yeah. Or Now, I think with the spices, as you mentioned, it's great when you have it as a main meal for a vegetarian. Then there is some extra flavor in there. So yeah, we, we talked a little bit before we actually went live here. Uh, who actually eats spatzling? What do we eat it with? And uh, the Austrian is a little bit out of his depth here. <laughs> I know they exist. I know they taste really great. And the last time I had it, uh, I think it was actually. I think it was actually a German restaurant in the U.S. and they had some goulash and they served spatzling. Perfect with goulash, yes. Okay, it's so wonderful with goulash. What, yeah. what else would you eat spatzling with? Um, any kind of a gravy or a sauce. I also want to mention I'm not from the area where spätzle is uh, very popular. I'm from the Frankenland, Franconia, where the kartoffel, the potato area, <laughs> and it's right around here, Nürnberg. 
Thunder is right here. So, so that would be in, in this greenish in this greenish area right about here. But where yeah. do Spätzle actually come from? It comes from the Baden-Württemberg area. I would call it Baden-Württemberg, but the Schwaben, they kind of uh, call it their own. So as far as our little map is concerned here, I hope you can see this. Yes, wonderful. It's the orange area. So right next Around door to basically Bayern. So if yeah. you happen to swing into Munich or Nuremberg, just take a left and uh, go over into Spätzleland. Questions on the okay. dough, and someone has asked to see the dough again. Yes, I will give it, you it bring it over here. Okay. This one is a little lower. So yeah. We have right one <laughs> question <laughs> how about is it? how thick is the yeah. dough, and can you use mm -hmm. a mixer with a dough hook? Yeah, I'll get to that here. Okay, is that uh, satisfying? Hold on a second. All right. So this is what the dough looks like without me losing it. That would kind of spoil the cooking process. <laughs> uh, to the person that asked the question, was that enough of a visual or would you like us to come closer one more time? Michael Zenner says, our dough is very dry. Do we add more water? Yeah, water or another egg. Okay. Yeah, you water. can add another egg also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably what I would be doing, yeah. Now, and uh, one yeah. more, sorry. Okay. okay. Thomas asked, do you have to let the dough rest or can you continue right away when there yeah. are bubbles? Yeah, it is good to rest it for a while, yeah. Okay. For about 15, 20 minutes, yeah, okay. before you use it. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And somebody so much. asked about using the mixer? Yes. Um, you can, but if you make uh, maybe a triple or quadruple portion just for one recipe unless you have a smaller mixer but this mixer here is pretty large it uh, would not be conducive for that so um, we had one question on should you knead the dough if no yes, you cannot well. knead it as you can tell it's just it's hard to handle, you can handle it by hand, so. It, it has all, almost has the consistency of what we call in the motherland, Uhu, the Klebstoff. Klebstoff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for anyone who Kleister. is now completely lost, Uhu, that's U-H-U, or the Klebstoff, their Klebstoff, by the way. Oh, Look right. it up. <laughs> yeah. Little trivia on the side. Yeah. And one more question, in the recipe, um, how many servings? It right. would serve about, I would say, for six for six person. Yeah, awesome. six servings. Yeah, it depends how large you want to make them, but I would say four to six. Yeah, this here is um, our four recipes in here. So, so this would feed approximately me. <laughs> you and and, and then maybe just one for, other person. Just for yourself. <laughs> Okay. Uh, this would be six people, eight people, or do you think? No, this is for a lot more. Than, I would say fifteen to twenty people. Oh wow! Yeah. So okay, so let, let me show you that that pot here one more time. Um, this is about the size of the pot here, with as much dough in here, and that's fifteen to twenty people. So in other words, mm -hmm. you don't have to completely go overboard in this quantity. Yeah. And, and this amount, of course, is just wonderful to do if you have a mixer like this of that size. But there are smaller mixers, and you may use it. And it's it's a wonderful thing to have. I think I have one like that at with home. With the dough hook, yeah, very yeah. nice. Helga, someone asked about sparkling water. Sparkling have you water? Used that? I don't know about that. I never use it. I just use plain water from the okay. faucet. So there you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's continue cooking. Now we go to the cooking part. All right. Um, I bring the dough over here, and um, we maybe start out with. I don't know. I think the recipes were given 
uh, pass on to the viewers. Yes. And then we'll talk about the spoon. And here we have two little spoons. You dunk them in the water. And it's a little boring, I think, to do these. But to be very sure you have no dough hanging out, otherwise they get the look of um, what we have here. You don't want like that. You want them like a nice little nookie. And the portion size, if we can bring this over here for just mm -hmm. a second. So did now Can jingle. Yeah. Okay. So this is about what we. Look but you can make them of... actually to your liking. You know, if you like them bigger, you can make them bigger. So the water is boiling. Or it has to be boiling. Gentle roll. And, and, a and the spoon has to be just like that. No. You can tell that it's suddenly getting quiet in the kitchen. It's the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm guessing you don't want to overcrowd the pot. No. You can, um, and now they all fall to the bottom when they come up to the top, then they boil for another two or three minutes. Okay, so let them sink and then let them sink. The yeah, down. and then maybe with a spoon loosen them from the bottom of the kettle. And Helga, so, we have a couple of questions. Yes, Helga, um, should the water be salted yes. before salted. it's mm -hmm. okay. salted water? Yeah, I think that says in the recipe too. Is it just a pinch of salt or is it? Uh... It's just like pasta, you know, pasta, when you cook pasta, you like little extra salt more than what you normally would use. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let that just be a little while here. So any other question? Yes. Um, Alexandra asked if the dough is tacky, um, what can they do? Tacky? I guess I'm not sure myself what tacky means. Too, too sticky. Yeah. I would call yeah. this tacky, you know, it's very yeah. sticky. Yeah, it, it has to be, it has to be like this, that it, um, you know, it's real stretchy like. So you really actually want it tacky. Yeah, you, you want it tacky. It mm -hmm. it, yeah, and if it's too thin, then it gets mushy in the hot water. And when it's too thick, well, then it's too too sticky, too thick. So, so you have about oh, a now small, a small a family little, of five, six. <laughs> you can put a lot of them in here, actually, okay. but we don't want to do all of them. They should kind of and uh, put, put it on the plate. So. And you mentioned earlier that uh, it is, for instance, used as a main dish for vegetarians due to it's, the way they are being made. Um, yeah. What else would you eat with it? Oh, look at that. Or you can put a little cheese on it, you know, just like that. So now right, this ladies is... and gentlemen, here's a little bit of a close-up. Ah, there we go. One plate of spätzle. Ooh. These are the gnocchi type things. You oh, know. so these are the gnocchi yeah. type, okay. And now we will go to the idea of the way the Schwaben do in, in, uh, in Württemberg Baden. They have a board, a special board even. And a wooden board, of course, would work the best. Okay. And what you do is put... Some of that dough on here. And I noticed that you do not have flour on the board. Is that on purpose? No. Okay. 
Well, they probably wouldn't hurt, but I usually do it like this. This is how I, when I, the first time I ever met Spätzle when I came from Germany, I met uh, a dear friend, Pauline Mueller was her name. She lived to be 94 years old and she was very active here in the organization. And she taught me how to make Spätzle. She was not born in Germany. Her parents came from Germany and she, this is the way she did it. What you do is you just, and there again, you can make them to the size you like. I like them a little bigger and chewy. You just shave it off. You kind of So once you actually shave it off, uh, it's onto the knife, basically it falls right off with the hot water. Yeah. So no fear of getting stuck on the knife. So. No, that is it. I haven't done this like that for a while. We used to do a lot of spätzle here for weddings and our own club events. We did have a question about spätzle um, being used in soup. Did you discuss that already? Pardon? Is spätzle ever used in soup or stew? For stew? You could, yeah, I think anything with a gravy or a, a very tasty sauce. Mm -hmm. See, this is now a different idea, but it's not enough to show. So I'm going to make a little more. This does turn into a little bit more of a labor intensive process when you scrape them up. It takes a little longer, and I'm not surprised that somebody came up with the idea to have a Spätzle press, you know, <laughs> that goes that goes so quick, so much quicker, and very uniform. Particularly if you fix Spätzle for more than two people. <laughs> yeah, when you make it for a household, even for a household. I think the good idea is to make really double or triple recipes, and and freeze the rest of them. You don't need to freeze very well. They, they freeze very well. Wonderful. Yes, very nice. And all you do is uh, either mic them, put them in a microwave, or put them in a small pan like this and warm them up in the oven. Or you can brown them, brown some onions in a fry pan or breadcrumbs. And um, and, have, and warm them up in the fry pan. Yes, I think the fried spätzle are my favorite. Yeah, and I, the I think. Mm -hmm. okay. I think we should almost put out a poll. What should we cook next and bring the cooking show back to the, to the uh, kitchen for future events? I would certainly want to say that a Wiener schnitzel has to be right up there on the list of things that we want to make again. <laughs> In case you're thinking that I'm hungry, you'd be right. <laughs> so here we are. These are, that is the original. And important is that you really drain them very good. Otherwise, uh, they get soggy. So definitely a different look to the specs that all together. Yeah. So also, presumably, since they are smaller and thinner, they cook much quicker. Yeah. Once they're up, swimming up on top, you give them a minute or two here where from the gnocchis, it's a little longer. There again, a little shredded cheese on top of it. Yeah. And it's really good. This real quick for your viewing pleasure. This is what the other version of the board looks like a scraped version. Would that be the correct way of saying? Mm -hmm. A scraped version. This, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Yeah. So um, now this is a picture of uh, where it's served with sauerbraten. So yeah, served with sauerbraten. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now you get hungry for it. <laughs> Do you have plans today? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. And I, I just love them like that because they're a little chewy, they're not so skinny. 
Here's a quick visual comparison between both plates. I hope that we get those adequately on camera. The Noki type and the off the board type. I think the off the board type looks better. Oh, I like those Just off the board. They're very good. Looks a little dainty, but very good. Yeah. yeah looks good. Okay, and here. This is just that is well. Okay, so this is where you roll out the heavy artillery. <laughs> now somebody thought of you making it easier and a little quicker, and it, which it would be. Uh, but um, and here you get the sort of like real tiny buttons, like knipfly. They call it in Switzerland. They call it knipfly. How long can you let the bow sit before it becomes uh, too? Too sticky or dries out. Uh, rather than Here, this, uh, yeah. Well, eventually, you, when you store them, you cover them up in the refrigerator or. The bow too? Yeah, the dough, you okay. can do that too. You can make that ahead of time. Okay. You know, so, so I don't know. Let's see how this works. All right, this is for. It's a workout now. This is where muscle comes in. <laughs> <laughs> I think my dough maybe is a little too too stiff for that, so okay. so I think I'll take that off. Would you like me helping now? And what we'll do? We will. Um, let's see. Oh, here. Add a little more water. Okay, so this would address also the question what happens when the dough gets too sticky. I think this would be right now the example as to what to do, right? Yeah, so then you add just a little more water so it has a better flow to it. So you added about uh, two, two, two tablespoons. Okay. Yeah. So this might be uh, jumping ahead, but is the stiffer dough okay for spatula press? Yes. Okay. It's perfect for spatula press. I'm okay. always geared into that for this because that's how we make most of them here. So I have maybe a little more. Where are we hiding the forks? Never mind. <laughs> I mean, isn't this what uh, usually the cooking show people do? They uh, watch somebody who actually knows what they're doing do the whole thing and then they just eat? Because that's a problem of reason. Yeah. Okay, let's try it again. I mean, that's what cooking is all about. It's not always there's a recipe. You know, you have yeah, to just... Yeah, this is much less sticky than it was before. Yeah. So... It gets oh, okay. so much so what's, smaller. What's interesting is what I'm seeing is it just basically falls to the cracks. Yeah. And um, you can also roll it back and forth, and but I think like this will be just fine. So you fill up the little container and then you press them. Mm -hmm. Because they kind of cut themselves. We don't need them to push it back and forth. Which of course not makes sense when you said earlier that they would be called Yeah, knipfly, uh, like so a button. This is, I guess, this is where the feature comes from. But um, it's for the chance. So, what else? it also means that we have Spätzle in Germany. Uh, in Austria, we would call them just Nudeln. Oh, is it? Yeah. And obviously, the Swiss have their own little terminology calling them nothing. <laughs> 
Yeah, they have that cute with uh, everything with Nokli Lee on the end. Okay, I think we got enough to to show what we have. Let me see if I can lift the camera here and uh, give you a view of the pot inside. I don't know if you can switch over here. See, then they're just like little the buttons. A little bit closer so you can see what's going on in the pot. Let's bring this in. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So we give them a minute or two because they're so little. And then this is the way they are. So. It's very important to get rid of most of the water here. So. So now, of course, the million-dollar question here is, is the texture of the Nupli significantly different than the Noki, than the actual I think just so. because it's tinier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because here, I mean, you almost don't have to chew it, you know, but these are kind of nutty-like and chewy. Likewise, the Noki, you know, it's, it's a totally different. Are there different dishes you would recommend for each one of the sizes? Personally, I never make those for ourselves or offer them when I used to have the catering service. I did never order for all of this. This is the winner. This is the winner. Okay, <laughs> I'm, so... keeping, I'm keeping it for the end to, okay. to show. We'll, we'll, we'll find out we'll what this thing does. This is the winner if you want to make. I am hard to hear, that's probably the mask. Or the accent. <laughs> so, then we go on to the Spätzle Press. And you get them in any store what sells You, you can just get them at a cooking store? Yeah. I'm going to... Is there a different use other than for Spätzle? Is this such a specialized instrument? that it's almost only for Spätzle. Now this is, I would say, only for Spätzle. Okay. And here my husband, he drilled the holes a little bit bigger because they, the original one made them so tiny, so so thin. And um, as you can tell in a little bit, it's just... Yeah. I think I have to take the spoon. This is very heavy. So the dough is still just as sticky. It's and uh, as opposed to the little ones, the nutley, for the press, you want to use the stickier one again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is the very best for here. And here, you can really pack it in. And it, it's fast and it's wonderful. And what is very important when you use the press, you have to have it in the water. Now we're going to short of water again. So I'm going to add a little water. Now that's why you have two pots. One is on standby to fill up. Yeah, the water to fill it up because it cooks away and then and it has to boil. And you you dunk it in just a little bit so it's covered. So you're not dropping them in, you actually have the bottom of the press submerged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And you have a knife handy and you press that down. I am curious what this is going to look like in a second. And you cut it off. And so you basically that's German noodles. And you put it in the in the water so the so it doesn't clog up. Now we have to wait a moment. Helga, there was excuse me, there was a question about how you make Käse Spätzle. Käse Spätzle? Well, you make the Spätzle either way, and you make a, a, a cheese sauce, or you just sprinkle. Let's see, I had, oh here, 
Here we have Parmesan, if you just put Parmesan over. And then, of course, ground onions, caramelized onions, you add to the Käse Spätzle. Now here, see, we have So we give them a moment. So basically that's the Teutonic version of noodles. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now to take them out, we had tried this and we said, oh, this is perfect to go in, but it's too tight and the liquids will not flow away. So we have to have something where it drains it real good. We don't want all these, uh, the water in we have also this here, the different, but we have to give that a moment, they're not quite done yet. I think a couple minutes yet. I'm wondering, uh, as we're going through the Spätzle experience, if you could check uh, with us from at home, just write in the little comment fields, how are things going? Are they turning out? Uh, which version are you actually leaning towards? The one that you scrape off the board? Maybe you actually have a Spätzle press at home. I don't know what you would, but maybe you do. And uh, how things are actually coming together. So just let us know in the little chat here. However, I am forecasting a run on uh, some cooking stores to buy Spätzle press. So average turnaround time with a pot of boiling water, of course, depending on how thick they are, about five minutes, give or take? Yeah, I think sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's important to have the water good boiling when you press it into the water. See, now it's, it's uh, because it cools the water down, so you have to give it a moment for it to, to come back, the boil. Yeah, this just screams goulash to me for some reason. Oh, this is wonderful with goulash, really. And here we go, here's the See now, of how much you have from one squeeze there, you know, this is just amazing. Where it would take so much longer. Now, some people say you should dip it in cold water, but I think it will cool down the spätzle, you know. So I don't do that. You can get rid of the... You can dunk, dunk it in hot water to get it rid of the, the kind of a sub. Yeah, the, the mm -hmm. what would I can't think of the word now. Now look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Like that. Oh, this now, is that's a portion really... for you. Yeah, this is this is a good appetizer. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. So, Those are for I'm having the feeling I'm gonna end up with a reputation. <laughs> um, Helga, when we have a moment, someone asked to see yeah. the holes in the Spätzle press. I think they want to see the size. The size of the Spätzle press? Like the holes, yeah. So let's try this. Okay, we'll work on that angle. <laughs> we'll work on that angle. Can you hold it up? Yeah. And I'm going to squeeze it out a little bit. Clean it up. Just to show. Right. Is, does it show? Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Is it better like that? Yeah. That's yeah. So mm -hmm. that's about uh, two, maybe three millimeters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So. Are we? Is that fresh parsley? Yes, it is fresh parsley. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what do we have here on the table? We have fresh parsley. We do have cheese. Yeah, we, we have um, parmesan. The and parmesan. The yellow cheese would mm -hmm. be cheddar. Cheddar. If you like it a little sharper, you know, a little spicier, a little tastier, then the parmesan has a wonderful flavor for Spätzle. And uh, I like also there's a mixture of Italian shredded cheese or Mexican. And that's that's really my two favorites. What I like. I think um, someone commented earlier about Emmentaler cheese. The one, Emmentaler. 
Emmental. Oh, that's very fine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you shredded. Yeah, shredded. Shredded Emmental. Emmental is white seconds. It's Miss Cheese. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that would then have to be with the left right? Just to keep it, <laughs> yeah. keep it conformed. Yes, that's right. So now, um, as far as mostly it is used as a side dish. And, uh, but like I had mentioned, vegetarians love spätzle with, uh, I make, uh, for instance, a mushroom sauce, a, mu a wine mushroom sauce and, um, and with some fresh herbs in it. And uh, you make the sauce with whipped cream. It's really very simple. You saute an onion and saute a few mushrooms, preferably partobellos, and uh, then you dust them with a little flour and add cream. And it's Sounds a wonderful really sauce good. to do serve with either one of them here. Yeah. So do we have a fork anywhere? Because uh, we can't just not I have do a this. fork here. I happen to have one. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. pardon me while the mask comes off uh, for public disclosure. I think they're both COVID shots. Feeling mm. relatively confident. Um, which one would you suggest? Let's just start here with um, the uh, mm -hmm. Noki version. The Noki version, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, it's not my favorite. Uh, very good, very good. It's maybe a little more chewy than I expected. Yeah. Uh, but overall, really, really just it, Here's the interesting thing. Due to three ingredients, it tastes incredibly clean. And when you have noticed this lately with bread, I don't know why I'm still having the pork in my hand, by the way, uh, but if I've noticed this lately with bread, um, fixing bread that really has just its basic ingredients, which is bread that is score bought and has just a little bit of time, you can absolutely taste the difference, particularly side by side. And I would assume that the same is true here with the are we making more or? Yeah, I'm gonna, I saw while you were talking, I make another pan for. So. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so are you going to taste? This was a. Well, let's let's have Erin have a taste. Grab a fork and. Yeah, there's some more like, forks back there. I, uh, let's unfortunately, see. I have a gluten allergy, so oh. I have to pass. But I'm that, so sorry. Let, that's a good excuse but, for me to ask my, my own question. Have you ever made Gluten-free, Spetzla? Gluten-free? Gluten-free? No, I haven't made them yet, but um, if the, but I don't see no problem making them gluten-free. Yeah. I will try and so let you all these know. are the ones that were shaved, right? Yeah. 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 So I'm going to make one more thing here I, before we forget. This is really outstanding. I have baked quite a few cakes, like cakes with, uh, for gluten-free, and I really have to say, and um, if you either buy a cake mix or the, the gluten-free cake flour, it turns out very good. Okay. Yeah, very nice. So Helga, since we do have you in the kitchen, of course, I do have to ask, uh, out of your personal kitchen, how do you love to cook? What is the one staple oh. that you come back to? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I have a favorite thing. Okay. But especially my husband liked it, so I used to make them quite a bit. And for myself now, I I do make them, and then I put them. I if you freeze them, I would not put them in a plastic bag and put them in a freezer. I would put them maybe in a plastic bag, but then in a box, because when they're frozen, then they break up into all kinds of little pieces, you know, so. So you have the accidental Netflix. Mm -hmm. Now I just want to do one more thing. Okay. I take a little bit here and we'll put some chopped spinach in it. For a little, and I think one can do it with other things. can put more in if you like. I think I'll make these here. Let's... 
Let me see, I got some in there. They have to come out. Once they are done and they start floating, you can leave them in for a little bit longer and they would not necessarily be great. Yeah, if you leave them in too long, then they get a little soggy. Okay. So, but you do have a little bit of time before you fish them out. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be in a hurry, you know, just... Okay. Now, we got... That was the spinach. And any cook can be creative and do... Maybe it was something else in there too, you know? So maybe I didn't make enough dough on that. If anyone has another question, please feel free to put that in the chat. Or if I missed it, we had a lot of chat happening. A question about how to keep the noodles warm when you make different batches for a group. How to how to keep the finished product warm? Yes. You you know well like with anything else you can uh, put it in a in a maybe oven proof container and just put it in a lukewarm oven and keep it warm, or you let them cool off and you can warm them up in the microwave, or again in a not in a 350 oven, but like a 220 oven, you know, so to warm them up that way or in the fry pan. So. <clears throat> now this looks very nice, it was colorful and. Um, it also that. tastes very really nice. <laughs> <laughs> But they're not quite Let's come a little bit done closer yet. Here and yeah, see. see? So in this state, in there. Uh, so I put a little sharp spinach in it. Couple minutes, or? Yeah, this is not quite done. See so how, even though they are drifting already, they're mm -hmm. not yet done. Yeah, once they come to the service, you give them two to four minutes. Okay. Now here, if you make a lot of them, once they're on top, you can squeeze in another portion. You can keep on going like that. So you can essentially double layer. You because can the double ones that layer. You just squeeze and sink to yeah. the bottom. Yeah. And then you skim off the first layer, and then the other one comes up again and and keep on going. So it like actually, that. With, with that method, it becomes quite efficient to cook. Very much so. Mm -hmm. When you cook it for a lot of people, like what we used to do, then it doesn't take really quite that long. So. Well, I didn't get all the water out here. So here, now it's with, um, with uh, spinach, a combination. Spinach in option mm -hmm. sounds really yeah. But then also you can eat sp cream spinach with it, you know, Again, for vegetarian, a wonderful meal. So, so. Okay, well, so that pretty much brings us toward the end of the cooking experience anyway. <laughs> yes, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that went rather well. So, of course, sure. uh, for everybody at home, for one, Helga, thank you very much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. And taking us through this. I hope we have a feedback of how people like the finished product. And um, it's uh, be nice to know. Yes, please do, of course, at home, let us know how it went. Any feedback is good feedback. Erin, uh, what email address would be the best to send feedback mm -hmm. to? Uh, 
you can email um, us at communications at gai-mn.org. Um, and yeah, we, we're, we're getting a lot of positive feedback in the chat. So okay. a lot of messages for you, Helga, I will share <laughs> after okay. the class. All right. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. Yeah, this then. was really fun. Of course, to Erin, thank you to Helga. Thank you very thank much, you. Uh, Linda, you. who organized it. Thank you very much, and everybody at home. Thank you guys very much for being here. I hope we can put on the second show at some point in the future. We'll mm -hmm. discuss that. If you have any recipes you want us to try, just bring it our way. Yes, that yeah. would be a good idea to hear what people are interested yeah. in, in what they like to know about certain things. Yeah. And with that, the GI Kitchen is signing off. Until next time, thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful Sunday. Goodbye. Ooh, thank you. Good suggestions. It's done. Okay. Are we all?